I bet some of you have noticed my special patch. Let me explain it to you just a little bit. I normally wear the legitimate patch, the ASE, Automotive Service Excellence, or Ask Somebody Else. I've been certified a long time. Oh, it's been about 20 years ago, I had an image on my computer here. Let me put it on the screen. One of my students, so clever and so witty, and through the magic of electronics, he modified my patch. He took the ASE and made it to the past patch. I must have pissed him off that day, again. I have expectations for my students. It's mostly the ones that don't want to do anything that think I'm an ass. Now the other semester, they gave me another patch. They gave me the half-ass patch. Now I'm going to ask you to write in the comment, is it better to be a half-ass or a whole ass? Thank you for the comments. Welcome folks. What are we doing today? I'm going to show you how to save a bunch of money when you're having an electrical problem that drains the battery. This vehicle, when allowed to sit for about five or days or seven days, the battery goes down. Now the customer bought a new battery and had the charging system checked out. The battery is new, the charging system is good, but the battery keeps going down. That tells me a lot. That tells me that there is something that is draining the battery. The technical term is called parasitic drain. Now we don't need a whole bunch of fancy equipment at all. All we need is a simple 12 volt test light. Now I'll bring the meter in to show you that this can be used to check for parasitic drain and how to fix it. Come on. Before I show you how to use the test light to check for parasitic drain, let me make sure you understand. You see that light? How long can I leave that test light hooked up overnight for a couple of nights before it drains the battery? Now let's go ahead and get the meter involved so you know there's absolutely no guessing. What I'm showing you is a 12 volt test light hooked up to a 12 volt battery. The light is on. I'm gonna tell you ahead of time, and I've measured it and I know, your average test light uses a quarter amp. Now I have a whole video explaining the difference between volts and amps. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description. Now this is not a whole bunch of electricity, but if I left this light for about a week, yes, the battery would go down, especially if it's a, if it's a weak battery. Now I'm gonna take my meter that this test light uses approximately a quarter amp. That's a 0.21. We'll round it off to 0.25. That's a quarter amp. A quarter amp is a very, very small amount. Now, a lot of vehicles have this drain, but when you use it every day, you'll never notice it. But this small drainage is not good for the battery. It never totally rests this vehicle has a problem that is drawing about a quarter amp. So let me show you how to use a test light to test for parasitic drain. Here's what we're going to do. I've got the negative cable loose and I'm going to disconnect it. Right, with the negative cable disconnected, I'm going to connect this alligator clip to the post. And then I'm gonna prop this guy up so it stays just like that. Now the light should go off. Now we should give it several minutes to hibernate. That's the technical term to describe when the computers or anything with memory finally does go to sleep. Now I could measure it and we will. This is using about a 0.2. I think it's about a 0.19, which is close to the same. This light should go off. Now, on your vehicle, when you're doing this, you can do a couple of things. You can go away for about 10 minutes and then come back, and that light should go out. So this is how you use the test light to check for parasitic drain. The light should go out. We're going to pretend that it's 10 minutes has gone by.
10 minutes has gone by and the light is still on. So here is what we're going to do next. We find the electrical box. There's usually one underneath the hood. We take the box out and we just move it to the side. Needle nose, they work really well. I'm just going to start at a fuse. Before it's over with, you might have to pull each fuse one at a time. Now you're doing two things. You're looking at the light and you're pulling the fuse. I'm going to pull the fuse and the light does not change. Okay, what does pulling the fuse do? It isolates the circuit. This is going to narrow it down. Guaranteed, we're going to find the problem. So I go to the next fuse and I take it out and I watch, I watch the, the light. Now I already did this one, so I know which one it is. And instead of me just wasting your time, I'm going to go ahead and go to the fuse that is causing the problem. It's not on this roll, it's this one right here. Watch what happens when I pull that out. The light goes off. And watch what happens when I put it back. The light comes back on. This tells me that it is on this circuit that is draining the battery. So what do we do next? Well, we identify what that fuse is. And boy, did I learn something. I looked under the cover and I found what I thought was a fuse. You know, 45 years of underhood experience and I'm still learning things. It says short and there's no amp rating on there. Now, I thought it's a fuse. It sure looks like a fuse. It's a surrounded by fuses. It even has the little test ports on top of it. But there's two things that are different about it. Well, there's actually three things that are different. First, I've never heard of a short fuse or whatever it is. I went ahead and I did some research. And if you look closely, it's wider than a regular fuse. And it's really not a fuse. It sure looks like a fuse, but it's called a short pin. And I'm not even sure what that does. Now, I've heard of a shorting bar when it comes to testing the clock spring on an airbag. But this is what the problem is. Now, there are several choices. Well, you can disconnect the battery every night or whenever you're going to use it and not use it. That's going to get old real fast. You can leave the fuse out, but that gets old real fast. What I'm going to do is I'm going to customize this electrical system. I've done it before. If you do a careful job, it's safe. If you don't do a careful job, you might start a fire. So when working with electrical, we have to be careful of several things, including providing protection as in a fuse. Instead of pulling and putting this short pin back in, I'm going to wire in a toggle inside the vehicle so the customer can turn it on and off every time he uses it. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's going to cost about $10 with supplies, with a toggle, some terminals and some wire to make this custom modification and it's going to work just fine. Before I install my protection, my fuse to protect it from electrical fire, I have to be very selective where I plug this in. I have two choices. I can put it at A and I can put it in B and this is how you decide with the battery connected and your test light ready to go, one side should have power, that means positive, and the other side should not. You're going to want to connect your protection, the fuse, to the one that has the power. Let me show you how you'll do that. Now I've made up this little wire. On one side, I have the right size terminal. On the other side, here's another little trick you don't have to buy an inline fuse holder, you can just use a couple of terminals that plug correctly into the fuse. I've made this. This is going to make me feel very safe about everything that is being customized and modified. So I take 
and I plug it in to the hot side right there everything has to be firm all the connections have to feel firm loose connections can get warm hot and then create a problem using the test light all I'm going to do is show you that all I've done is I've teed off of that one connection let's go on to the next part we're almost done we've got the technical part out of the way now it's time to get the difficult part out of the way it used to be easy to be able to run a wire from underneath the hood to the dash area it's become almost impossible nowadays we're going to need some wire and it's going to have to go from the fuse box to near the toggle switch located inside now i like to acquire wire that means get it for free wire can be very expensive at the auto parts i usually just butcher up an old extension cord that needs repair so i've taken some wire it needs to be about a 14 gauge maybe even a 12 gauge depends how many amps you're running a 16 or 14 gauge wire should be fine at the most we're handling 30 amps that fuse is going to make sure that nothing goes wrong again it's very difficult to go through the firewall that's the wall between the engine and the dash and it's going to look a little makeshift but it's going to work i've gotten used to this we're going to have to run the wire along this area right in here and of course i'm going to show you the other end come on we ran the wires from underneath the hood now we have to be careful that they don't pinch anything okay but that's i'm not too worried because that fuse is going to take care of it now i found a very convenient place to put my toggle switch it happens to be on the fuse box cover and it's also a little container in here so it'll hold coins or whatever else you want to put in there i've taken the, the box out I've prepared the hole. This is where my toggle switch is going to go. I'm going to install my toggle switch here so the, so the owner operator can toggle on and toggle off every night as they need to. Nothing will be affected. Everything's going to work. Now, the problem is the computer, the engine computer. The engine computer needs to be replaced because the capacitor is like a battery is not doing his job anymore. Now it would be a couple hundred dollars to dig in the dash and it would be several hundred dollars to buy the computer. The computer is a necessary part of the circuit so I don't see anything wrong in the comments. See, tell me what you think. I hope I get some comments either telling me, hey, that's pretty good or you shouldn't be showing folks that. So we're almost done. Let me show you what we're going to do. I'll have to fish the wires through there and then finish the connection. I got a little lucky with this little access panel. I was able to drill a couple of holes to allow the wires to go through. I've got the toggle in the on, on the on position. So I'm going to make sure that I have the template that goes on it facing the right direction. Looks okay. It works. Well, I'm going to show you that it works. Looks a little shade tree, but it's safe. That's the important part. Let's go finish under the hood, my favorite place. It's not that complicated. You just have to be careful what you're doing. We've got this inline fuse that's connected a certain way. We make sure that the protection plugs in to the one that is hot all the time. All we have on the inside is a toggle switch and the wires run this way. Let's test it out with the test light connected that special way. Let's see if it works. The light is off. The toggle switch is off. There's no drain at this time. I'll put the meter in just a minute. Can we toggle on please? There, it's ready. The circuit is ready to operate. All they have to do is when they turn the engine off is to toggle off. Toggle off, please. Let me put the meter to it. Some of you may want a more precise reading. To me, the test light works fine. 
But just to satisfy some of you that want to see the meter reading, let me go ahead and hook it up. I'm going to take the meter and I'm going to hook it up what's called series. I connect one side here, I connect the other side there, I turn the meter on, and I'm reading a perfect zero, zero, zero. Toggle on? With the toggle on, we almost got to one amp. You see it? We're floating around 0.7, that's three quarters of an amp. 0.8, that's a little bit more than three quarters of an amp. Right now there's a drain. Toggle off, please. Toggle off, and we go to zero. That's what we want. Thank you for sticking around. I hope you learned something. If you like this video, we would appreciate it so much if you hit that thumbs up button. If you learned something, please write it in the comments. I'm looking forward to the comments. I want to know what you think about this modification. I might call it Mexican ingenuity. It works. We have to be careful how we wire it. But it takes care of the battery going down. I don't have to replace that expensive computer. And it was satisfying to be able to do this. Again, folks, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Keep coming back. We enjoy your views. Thank you.